Okay, good morning. It's early morning here, so I have my cup of coffee already. I just woke up. The plan for today is to do a one hour challenge where I create a 3D gravity platformer, something along the lines of like Outer Wilds or Mario Galaxy. You can see if you can follow, um, make an empty project and just write what I write and see if you're able to, to understand it. Uh, otherwise, I'll leave the, um, uh, the source in the description. So, what is a 3D gravity platformer? Well, basically, you can walk on any side of any objects. I have done this before. Uh, most recently, I did it for uh, a competition, the GM48 in March, uh, which is a game called Well Digger where there is one central planet and you can go walk from one side to the other and there's a boss fight and all kinds of things. Um, so I'm doing this without any external tools. That means no OBJ importer, uh, no existing scripts, only an empty game maker project. So the challenge will be to like set up a 3D camera create some kind of model and I, I think for a one hour project I think a sphere will do best so I'm gonna make a sphere and yeah basically do player controls that is the the entire challenge so it's now 655 and I think I'm just gonna start yeah so I'll just start by creating an object. And when setting up a 3D camera, I like using views. So let's see. So I enable views and I make view zero visible. Um, then I create a camera and I give it a projection matrix. Let's see. Actually, this is this is wrong. I need a view index. Um, matrix build projection FOV. I'll use a negative FOV and a negative aspect, and I won't have time to explain that right now. Okay. And I'd like to to uh, like move the camera with the mouse, so. I'll add a yaw variable and a pitch variable. Now for step, I'd only like the camera to move when I hold the right mouse button. So I'm getting the uh, the difference between the mouse position and the middle of the screen, and then I reset the mouse position to the center, so that if you have moved your mouse from the previous frame, this will be recorded in the dx dy variables. Let's see. And then I'll use these to alter the yaw and pitch. 
Let's see. And these are often way too sensitive, so I'll just multiply them by 0.2. And this can be changed later. Now I'll use yo on pitch to, to create a vector from the player to the camera. So cam direction x. And I think I'll use degrees. Okay, and this is something that is that needs to be changed later, but I'll use zero, zero, one for the up direction. This is like the easy way of doing up direction, uh, but it does not work for this kind of game, but I'll just use it temporarily. Um, I need to create a Z variable as well. And I'll go to draw. I'll just draw a rectangle like Zero, zero, hundred, hundred, false. Now, this vector is a length of one, and that doesn't work. So I'll use cam x from instead. Let's see. I'll create a room and I'll place the object and I'll start and see what happens. Okay, so now we have a 3D camera and I can move the camera with the mouse and uh, we only have a rectangle but the camera can loop around so, so it's not good right now but at least it works. So we have something to work with. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and just make a sphere. So if you'd like to skip this, I mean, this will be just repetition. Uh, I'll put the, the time on the screen. Okay, so for the rest of you, I need to start by creating a vertex format. Uh, start. Begin. Let's see, there we go. Then I'll create a function for creating a sphere. It has four arguments, one for the number of vertices around the horizontal, one for the vertical, and some uh, the same for the texture repetition. Uh, so Now I can use the x, x and h verts to, to find an angle that goes from zero all the way around to two pi. So a one there we 
we go. And angle two. So I'll maybe I'll explain later, but I need to create four points and then create two triangles from these four points. Um, so I have two angles here. And I need to do the same for the Y. Actually, I'm going to call this X A1, X A2, and Y A1, Y A2, Y Y Y Y V V. Okay, so let's see, x, c, 1, y, c, 1, 0, and the y angle goes from 0 to pi, and when it's 0, yeah, so it should be x, s, y c one then we will multiply y s one <sighs> okay it's a little complicated this just try to <laughs> uh, try to understand and I don't expect you to understand if you never didn't done this before so I need like a pattern. It goes from one on the x-axis to two on the x-axis. Set this to two, and then I'll set this to two. And I also need a vertex vertex chord. And here I'll use the uh, x-x over h verts times h rep. And the same for the y-axis. Let's see, and I'll remove this, switch the order of these, and I'll add the last one, which is two in all. There we go. And I think this should be a sphere. Let's see. I'll create a quick texture as well. Let's see. Sprite. I'll call it text planet. And I'll make some grass, like super simple grass. There we go. That's grass. Can you see that? 
Um, let's see, I want this to be a little bigger. So here's the world matrix. And I want it to be scale 32. And I'll just see what happens now because I haven't enabled like a depth buffer yet. Um, must use vertex begin. Did I do that? No, I didn't. Debuff format. Maybe I'll also need a shader, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, I need a shader. Let's say a shader set. Right. So the format only has position and texture coordinates. So I'll remove color. Let's say now let's see what happens. Okay. There we have a sphere. But I need to enable some GPU functions for it to draw properly. I'll do that in create event. Now let's see. I need to able, enable the uh, the depth buffer. So you need to be able to write to and read from it, and those are two separate functions. So I'll enable writing first, and then Z testing which is reading from it. Uh, I'd like the texture to repeat. And I want to enable culling. Let's see. Counter clockwise. Let's see what happens now. Okay, so it's being drawn the um, from the inside out. Why is it being drawn from the inside out? Actually, I'll just fix it by changing the order of these. Now it should work. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I have a sphere. Now I'll remove the, the plane that I had and I'll create a new texture for the player. Let's see. Sprite, sprite, sprite. All right. Okay, there we go. Text player. I'll make the player red. And I'll give him a face. Let's see. Perfect. Uh, let's give him a pupil as well. Excellent. There we go. So now I have the text player. Okay, it's time to make a player. I'm actually gonna, just going to use one object. So I'll make the system object like fall down. Now, uh, when I make a player object, I use what's called Verlet integration, which is you don't keep track of the uh, the speed of the object. You only keep track of the previous position, and then you like infer what the speed is. So I'll start by doing that. Let's see. I'll move him a little bit up. Let's see. 200 and in step event uh, so the, the speed of this frame is the current position minus the previous position and then I update the previous position Let integration. Update 
previous position. And I'd like to apply some friction. acceleration and now I'd like to add gravity but instead of just adding to the Z direction I'd like to add a vector so I'll make this later but I'll, I'd like to add the negative up direction G equals point something let's say Okay, so I need to create the up direction. Now, to begin with, that will just point upwards. Uh, apply speed to position. camera updates to the bottom and now the object should just fall down let's see what happens yeah perfect okay so instead of one central planet I'd like to create a list of several planets um, let's see So, geometry list equals this list create. And I'll do this in a simple way. I'll add an array to the list for each sphere I like in the world. Actually, I'm going to make a new enum as well geometry sphere. And I'll give it a coordinate x. Y Z radius. So now I have this list and I can loop through that here. Let's see. Avoid level geometry. Okay, so making a sphere avoid another sphere is a very simple process. Um, let's see. You only really need to get the distance between them. So these are the x, y, z, and radius of the um, the geometry sphere. I get the distance from the player to the, the sphere. 
And now, if this distance is less than the player radius plus the sphere radius, then you are touching ground. So I'll make a new variable called ground equals true. And I'll set it false up here. And I'll also set the false in create event. Set. And I need to create the radius. 16. Let's try that. And I'll make a new sphere for the player. Let's see. Actually, I'll just make an, uh, copy this loop into the draw event as well. If I start it now, I wonder. Incorrect type array, expecting a number. Oh, right. Okay, so I, I don't want the player to have a repeating texture, so I'll create a new player model and make it have no repeating texture. Yeah, there we go. Well, that's terrifying, actually. <laughs> um, I'll move the camera a little further away because I think it's a little too close. Okay, now I'd like to make the player avoid the uh, the level geometry. So I have the distance; it's less than the radius plus uh, the radius of the, the sphere. Actually, I'll create this as a variable instead. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And then I'll just push the player out of the sphere. And it should be times rr over dist. what happens now. Yeah, now the player avoids the, uh, the geometry, but it's not moving, but I can fix that. Um, I'd also like to record which object is nearest so that you can walk from one object to the other. And I'd like this to be the distance from the surface rather than from the center. So I'll subtract RR. And I'll use this to, to update the, um, the up vector.
Mm, I'd like to be able to move as well. So now we have the next part. I'm going to do a matrix trick uh, because I'd like the player to have a matrix which I can use to like figure out which direction you should move when I push a button. Uh, but this matrix needs to always be perpendicular. Uh, I like to think of a matrix as a position and three vectors pointing in perpendicular directions. Now they don't necessarily have to point in perpendicular directions, but for this kind of use, that's definitely the most useful. So I need to create another function. I'll just create it here. I'll call it orthogonalize. And this will accept a matrix and it will like fix it. It will make each vector unit length and it will make them all perpendicular. Uh, and since this is a gravity game, I like the up vector to, to remain pointing in the same direction and I like to alter the two other directions so that they are perpendicular to the up vector. So I'll start by just normalizing the up vector. Now, a matrix is basically an array of 16 indices. Uh, the up vector is stored in the 8th, 9th and 10th index. Um, so to normalize that, I need to... Uh, uh, basically do Pythagoras uh, on, on those. Okay, so now the up vector is normalized. Now I'd like to create the side vector and I need to do that by basically taking the uh, cross product. So try to remember from uh, math class what a cross product is. The side vector is stored in indices four to uh, seven, where seven is unused. Um, so, <clears throat> And then I'll normalize that as well. And then it's four, four, five, five, six, six. Four, five, six. And I forgot something important. I need to use an accessor so that I just alter the matrix directly instead of copying it. Yes, and then I'll do the same for the last vector which is zero, one, two. <clears throat> That's actually six, four, five, four. Wait, it's five, six, four. Zero, one, two, uh, and I'll just like, test it. Okay, now these should be the same, and if they aren't, uh, I need to fix something. Let's see. Um, let's see. 
Okay, so the first cross product is wrong. What happens if I do this? Oh wait, my mistake. It's it's the last one actually. So I need to negate that. Let's make it negative. And now they are perfect. Excellent. So now I know that works. Now I'll create two new matrices, one for the character. And one for the camera. And I'll use the camera matrix to basically move the camera. Uh, so instead of storing yaw, I actually don't need to store yaw at all because I have a different way of doing it. So I'll remove yaw, I'll keep the pitch. Uh, so I have this and I can do a matrix multiplication. Delta yaw one, one. and I'll go here and I use the um, Mm, let's see, can not. I'll subtract the two direction. Times C, can not eight times S. Eight, nine, ten. Uh, let's see. Then I should uh, add that. Let us see what happens now. Okay, the camera is still rotating. I think it's. It's the wrong direction in the vertical. Let's see, I'll also add key press, others, escape, game M, just to make it easier to exit. So negative there, and I'll clamp this. negative like 40 positive 89 might have to like make it the opposite no that's good I think it's it has to be negative here as well should it be positive there let's see this is like trial and error to, to do what feels good. Yeah, okay, perfect. And then I'll make, uh, let's see, the camera matrix. Yes, so I have an up direction. I can use this to uh, alter the, um, actually, I'll, I'll just do input instead. Let's see, input. up here 
So when pressing either A or D, I'd like to move like from side to side. So I'll use the, the side vector in DC is four to uh, seven, or four to six because seven is unused. Uh, so I'll use char matrix four times age, and then I'll use the forward vector char map. Char mat zero times V one two four five six. Now I'll just test this. Yeah. Okay, we we do have something. Uh actually I'd like to use the camera matrix. So that we move in the direction the camera is pointing. Then I'll update the matrices. So I'd like for the up vector of both the character matrix and the camera matrix to point in the up vector up direction of the player. So for the camera matrix, I'll add the up vector times something, 9, 10, y, z, and I'll do the same for the character matrix, let's see, actually orthogonalize can matrix. And I like the player to like face in the direction he's moving. Uh, so I'll also add a speed. One, two. And this may also have to be like multiplied by 0. 0.2, for example. And that is just a magic number. It's easy to change later. And I'll orth orthogonalize that as well. Okay. And when drawing, I'd like to use that. Let's see. What happens now? Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, store the position. should work yeah perfect okay but he's facing the wrong direction so I'd like to uh, rotate him 180 degrees around and now it's time for some magic because we're still using 001 as the up direction now I can use the camera matrix up direction instead what happens then Yeah, look at this. Now the camera can look around like normal, even though we are on the opposite side of the sphere. Perfect, okay. What should I add now? Jumping, perhaps. Our jump. I'd like to jump with space. So I'll add the up x times j. You can only jump when you're on the ground. And I'll set it to 15 and see what happens. Oops. Yeah, excellent. I will move, move the uh, matrix updating to after we avoid the level geometry. I'll create another sphere. Let's see. I'll move it 
hundred over there and radius eighty. Look at this. I'll create another one. I'll move it like three hundred in that direction. Mm. Wow, this coffee is cold now. Mm. That was not good. Okay, we're getting somewhere. And I'll add another one. Actually, 400. I'll just make it like tiny, 50. <laughs> I'd like for the sky to be different color. Draw clear, make color RGB 64, 128, 256. I think this is some kind of blue. No, wow, that's green. What happens now? Oh, right, I see the problem. This should be 255. Ah, there we go. It's a little purple, actually. And I'd like to make the, uh, let's see, let's make the camera movement smoother. So I'll go pitch, yaw velocity, pitch velocity. And I'll go up here. We'll add this. I'll subtract your velocity times 0.3 and I'll do the same for the pitch. It's a little different for the, the pitch. No, actually, it's not. Pitch vel times 0.3. And our velocity there. Let's see what happens now. I'm starting to get done here, actually. I think... I don't think there's any major thing I've forgotten. I'll give the player some hair. Let's see... How does this look? I wonder. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> okay. That is some beautiful hair, isn't it?
I'd like for the player to like, fall faster when it's not touching the ground. So I will actually, let's see, 0.9 minus ground times 0.1. Let's see what happens now. Okay, now we can actually orbit. And I think the camera's up direction changes a little too quickly, so I'll reduce this to 0.1 instead. And there we have it. I'm done. It only took 50 minutes. No, actually, I'd like for the acceleration to be a little less equals 1, actually point 0.5 plus ground times point 0.5. I'll multiply that by the, with the input actually. Uh, v times equals I. H times equals acceleration. Actually, I'll, I'll see what happens because now when you jump, you can't orbit anymore and I kind of like the orbiting well you can actually no. okay I'll remove that let's see or I'll just reduce a little bit maybe can I reach that far let's see am I able to reach that tiny tiny planet up there maybe if I orbit long enough. Yep, yeah, there we go. Okay, and just since I have the time, I'll create a sprite for the, uh, or the te a texture for the sky. Separate texture page, image, resize, uh, 512, 256, apply. That's a little too blue. And this will be a terrible, let's say, a terrible sky, but I'll try alpha. And maybe I'll actually like make the let's see make the bottom a little darker. How should I do this in Game Maker, I wonder? Maybe something like that. And I will create a sun. Yeah, I'll make it there. Wait. 
Why is it so tiny? Oh, okay. There. Let's see what this looks like. to actually invert the cooling. Let's see, GPU set pull mode, no cooling. And then I'll make it counterclockwise again. Oh, I forgot to create the sky shader. I'll just duplicate the, uh, the planet shader. Duplicate, 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 there we go. Yeah, excellent. Okay, now we have a sky as well. What the hell is going on up there? What the f Okay, let's see. I think I get it. Let's see. Clamp. Zero, one. That doesn't make sense. Oh. Oh, okay. Um, there we go. Now I'll add some simple shadows. Float. Varying shade, back three, light direction, back three. Let's see, there we go. Minus one, minus one, minus one. the world position times that let's see normalize xyz light direction okay so it's point eight plus the maximum actually point five plus the maximum of zero and the negative of that and then I'll use this here let's say gl power rgb times it is that and let's see what happens now we have some basic shading as well but the um, it should be negative actually, so uh, the um, uh, the it's it's brightest on the side of the sun. Where's the sun? There we go. Um, actually. Okay. Let's see what happens if I do this. Yeah, no, 
it's way too bright on the, the sun side. Yeah. Okay, so that concludes this little challenge. It is possible to create something like Mario Galaxy, albeit not with like imported models, in GameMaker for one in one hour. And this is the result. You can jump, you can walk around from planet to planet. It's easy to add in, uh, new planets. And uh, if you can figure out the, the equation for it, then you can also add more types of planets right here. Just add another uh, enum, for example, cube. And then you just add a cube, you give it more like parameters like uh, width, height, depth, uh, length. Uh, and um, yeah, figure out how to make your player avoid it. This, I mean, making a sphere avoid another sphere is like the easiest thing you can possibly do. It's just getting the radius of each and displacing it. Uh, making it avoid a cube, slightly more difficult, but it is possible, and it's not really that hard. So I'll leave that up to you. Thank you for watching. This was a fun little challenge. I'll follow up with more challenges later. Uh, yes. So what I'm going to do is add some comments to the code, and I'll leave the source in the description down below. Cheers!